I think agents are underhyped and overhyped at the same time. It's like depending on the circles you run into, either people are um, completely dismissing them as toys that don't do anything, which that is definitely the wrong opinion. I'm the founder and CEO of Skyvern, which is a tool that helps other businesses automate things they would do in the browser. So think of it as like active pieces, but like if a website doesn't have an API that you can integrate with, so a piece could never exist, you can use our product to interact with it instead. What's the most surprising thing Skyvern has been able to do so far? I, I think like the thing that blows my mind is uh, every company we talk to, whenever they build an automation, no matter how complex it is, the hardest part for them to do is logging into a website. And if you talk to an engineer that does it, just handling all like the nuances of logging in, like what if your password expires? What if you need to submit a 2FA code? What if there's a pop-up that appears as you're going through it? Like they, every team used to allocate about three days to do it. And with Skyburn, you can do that in 20 seconds because you can just say, hey, if there's any pop-up dialogues, close them. Hey, if there's any, like the prompt for it, it's just very straightforward. And that's by far the biggest thing driving adoption for us today. What's the biggest technical challenge for you right now? with making yeah. an agent that can browse the web like a human. So there's a, there's a few. So a, about a month ago, we published this report called Webbench. And what it's meant to do was compare the performance of AI browser agents in, in more realistic environments. Uh, prior to that, the best benchmark that companies used was this one called Web Voyager. And if anybody looked at the report, that you'd see everybody claiming they have like 90% accuracy. And then you go use the products and it wouldn't work. And you'd be like, what the hell's going on? And we dug into it and we found that Web Voyager was 600 tasks on 15 websites. And so all those agents claiming they're really good worked on 15 websites, which is not like you and I use more than 15 every day. And so we published a new benchmark called WebBench. And that one is 452 websites and about 7,000 tasks, which is still way too small. But it reset the kind of landscape. And what we found was that a lot of agents were really good at reading data from web websites, like reading text. But when it came to actually filling out forms, logging in, downloading files, any of those operations, they all sucked. Like we were the best one and we we're like 44% accuracy. They all sucked, right? And so that, so what I see getting better in the next few months, to answer your original question, is really once you have a metric, right, you can improve that metric. And once the metric is more comprehensive than 15 websites, you can actually double down on it. And so I suspect that what's going to happen is that's going to get better really, really quickly. Yeah, so probably a lot of other companies are making a lot of promises, but actually what they have is like a web scraper, which has been around for forever. Exactly, which is still useful. Like, I'm, I'm not saying it's not useful, but uh, it just, it's like chapter one of the 10 chapter story, you know? Yeah, agents have been hyped a lot recently. I think a lot of people have misconceptions about what agents can do. So from your perspective, how are agents actually useful right now in the real world? Yeah, so I think agents are underhyped and overhyped at the same time it's like depending on the circles you run into either people are um completely dismissing them as toys that don't do anything which that is definitely the wrong opinion and they're saying that they'll replace all programmers in the next week which is also not true you know discover is an agent company we help companies automate things that do the browser typically what they would do manually and what we're finding is that like we're achieving what i call like l1 automation today which is Basically, if you wanted to do web automation, you would either have to write like playwright scripts, puppeteer scripts, or you'd have to use RPA tools. And that was only limited to highly technical audience. And with tools like Skyvern, even though they're not perfect yet, non-programmers who can write English can now use that. And that's like been the big boom of the AI era so far. Like all the programming augmentation tools that exist, they help people who couldn't write code or maybe did not like writing code actually build things really, really fast, which has been, which is awesome. What's coming next, I, I suspect in the next six to 12 months is as those systems get more robust, we're going to start to see them go one level higher, which is start doing more and more automation. And so, you know, if you go on Twitter, everybody's like, everything's going to get automated in two years, okay. probably in the five to 10 year time frame, we're going to see more and more adoption go around. What are some upcoming features? that Skyvern is gonna introduce that you're excited about? So the three areas we're focusing on is really helping you as a user have a better experience at how you build an automation. Like today it requires you to kind of understand how to prompt. It's kind of kind of messy from that perspective. We wanna have a, a kind of a companion build it with you. That's one. Second is one of the biggest problems that we hear is that Skyvern is slow. We know it's slow. Like <laughs> trust, trust me, we know it's slow and we're working. Our plan is to actually like dramatically improve the speed of Skyvern. 
And third is with AI agents, as you have them read the web over and over and over again to do specific operations, reliability is not like a guarantee. And so we intend to also improve uh, reliability in Skyward. For a company that's not doing much automation right now and they want to get into it, where do you think they should start? Like what are the processes they should initially begin introducing automation into? Yeah, so one of the cool things about automation is like every company has things that can automate. It's just about getting a good pulse for what, what that is. What I would do is I would take, I would just map out like what, where everybody's time goes and just like rank that top to bottom. Like I spend most of my time on LinkedIn prospecting. Okay, maybe I should automate that. I spend most of my time updating Salesforce after a sales call. Okay, maybe I should automate that. I spend most of my time going to fetch invoices at the end of every month. I spend four hours a month doing that because I'm in Europe and I have to do that. Like that's probably what, what you should automate. And I think focusing on anything that's not the biggest or the top five biggest is probably like a waste of time because we've also seen some companies get really excited about automation and they do the thing once a month. And like the return on investment of that is like really low and often not worth it. I used to work at a data science company and the CEO told me, because we were thinking of automating a bunch of things and he was like, Basically, just guesstimate the time it takes to do the task. Guesstimate how long it will take to automate. This should be low. This should be very high. If they're at a, you're even close to even, it's just it's just not worth it. But there are a lot yeah. of that take forever to do on your own that we can already do very fast I, automation. I think about this comic a lot. I spend a lot of time on this task. When do I automate it? Right, and this is what you want it to be like. But it can often be like this. And so you, to, you better be sure that it's going to actually save you time in the long run when you start working on it. And that's like one of the arts of getting it right and be productive with it. Yeah, and that's something that Active Pieces is trying to, to do. That's the niche we're trying to build. We're trying to be like the fastest, easiest way to automate things. Or even if you're trying to use a webhook and you're not very technical, just use our webhook trigger. Ask ChatGPT to, to put it exactly. In right. And then bingo, bango, that takes like five minutes but on the flip side like one of the coolest memories i have of skyward is like this is what told me that like the direction we're going in was actually possible was we had this like a, about a year ago we had this like random mom from like this town i live near, near this town i live in in canada uh reach out to us and start using a product and she wanted to build uh, a tool to help her son compose music and her his friends compose music and the tool had no way to automate signups and so she started like using Skyrim to do it and she was non-technical and she was, all she was doing was like asking deep seek, like what to do, what to do, what to do over and over and over again, ended up building this really complex automation end to end while not knowing anything technical. Right. And, and that painted like for me, like I painted what the future could be like, which is that anybody who's like sufficiently motivated, hopefully less motivated than like that mom was, but still sufficiently motivated could actually learn how to do these things and kind of overcome the things they don't know really quickly by relying on all these AI tools. Yeah, I, I use ChatGPT a lot to, you know, to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I, I do music also. And the AI music tools now are like scary good. I had this idea. So in the US, you probably know if you get pulled over at night, they might ask you to recite the ABCs backwards. And I'm like terrified of this happening if, if I'm sober, you know, like I don't drive yeah. But like, I would, like all, all the way from Z, like all the way from backwards or just like, that's my fear. I don't think I could do it all the way through. So I had an idea for an album of music that was just backwards ABC songs in different styles. And I was able to do that in like an afternoon <laughs> with the, the Suno.com. It's called backwards ABC songs to listen to to memorize the backwards ABCs. No way, but send it to me because my, my, my two year old's like obsessed with the alphabet right now. So I'm going to see if she's going to like the backwards. Well, there's like a metal version, there's a bluegrass version, there's a pop version. Uh, I'll try a kid's version too. Plug in myself. That's not what I should be doing. Uh, <laughs> Self-promotion. You made a flow in active pieces. So uh, yeah, let's yeah. Dive, let's see what you made. Skyburn helps company, like companies all around the world do a lot of different things. And we've like neatly organized them into these agents on the left-hand side to give people inspiration on what it can, is, capable, is capable of doing. And we have two agents that are live today and a bunch that are training in beta. Um, but companies use us to fill out contact forms. They use us to apply to jobs automatically. They use us to fetch invoices, purchase products, interact with government websites, and so on. And what I'm excited to show you guys today is like this thing called contact form automation and job application automation in case that is relevant to you. So what I did was I set up this nice little Google Sheet. Uh, we have a few companies doing this with us. It's really cool. It's like they basically found 
there's this new form of outbound they can take advantage of uh, where they go to a website and fill out the contact form. And if the person you're targeting is reading that, then it's very likely you're going to get past all like the email spam filters and so on. And one of the, one of our customers that does it has a 8% reply rate through this method. And, and what they do is they basically prospect a list of leads that they want to reach out to. They come up with a message and they paste a bunch of URLs in here in the message you want to send. And then they click send to Skyver. I'm just going to click this. And what I set up was an active pieces um, flow here that basically, you know, when a row gets updated in Google Sheets, it just makes sure that it's a new row. And then what it does is it runs Skyvern and sends a prompt to it to have it go if go to that website and just like fill out the contact form and submit it, like literally this prompt here. And then update the Google Sheet with a response. Wait about 10 minutes to make sure it's finished. Uh, and then check this, check the status and then update the Google sheet again. And that's it. Awesome. And so on the Google sheets, uh, on the Google sheet side, you know, we, we ran it, it got updated with a link. We can click on any one of these. And as soon as it leaves the queue, we'll be able to see like a live stream of Skyvern actually going and filling out the form. You see here, like. Skyvern, you know, loaded up the website, it closed the pop-up dialog, even though we didn't tell it to. It was smart enough to kind of do that. So now it's deciding what to do? Yeah, exactly. And how does it decide? Well, it's actually kind of cool. Like, we're, we're actually an open source company, similar to Active Pieces. So if you're ever curious about how Skyvern works, you can click on our GitHub link. We're pretty fortunate to be, fortunate to be pretty popular. Uh, and we kind of describe how our product works in here. So, you know, this is all the prompts that run, how they analyze the page to decide what actions to take so that you can fill out forms, apply jobs, etc. Yeah. So we're back here. So it like went through and it's like, okay, I'm John Doe. I'm going to fill in John Doe at example.com for the email address. And it's going to be like, I'm gonna, hello, I'm interested in learning more about your products. <laughs> Obviously not a good message, but. <laughs> Hopefully they can filter that out after the submission goes through. Yeah, this one here, it like, you know, it went on to the homepage of Canada H back and it was like, click to contact us, fill out the name, email. Hello, I'm interested in learning more. And then it click submit and it's done. Beautiful. Uh, last question. Do you think my hat is cringe or do you think it's cool? <laughs> I think that's like totally different on the audience, you know? Yeah, I think it's relevant to the times. But the, the question for you is, can you buy code active pieces? Active pieces flows are so easy to build that I don't really need to. But if I need to do other stuff, like I made a website that had an inbound form just to mm -hmm. test inbound form automation. And so I, I vibe coded that. I just, hey, make this, yeah. change this, hey, do that. I vibe coded this one in like 20 minutes. And like, I literally would have taken me like two days otherwise. Oh yeah, this is, wow. This looks good. Anything else you want to say? Want to plug? Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think I'm good. All right.